and concerns uh, that were raised with the minister at the time, and some of them were so serious such that they had to be probed and processed further as they impacted on, <coughs> on issues of service delivery. But also alongside this is that there were also other standing matters that were out there in the public domain uh, that were largely spoken about. And uh, the fact of the matter is that it was difficult for an incoming minister such as myself to be able to provide, uh, you know, not even provide, but properly articulate on those issues, but also uh, <clears throat> provide the leadership and guidance on the on 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 the matters that 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 had been so pointed out. Um, so the <clears throat> the primary purpose of the reference group and its responsibility was to consider complaints and concerns raised by managers in the South African Police Services, obtain statements and evidence from the affected officers and officials, conduct an evaluation, analysis, and impact of each complaint, compile a report with recommendations uh, to the minister and for minister's uh, consideration. We put together the terms of reference, and the terms of reference, uh, amongst others, was to consider the issue of promotions and suspensions of senior managers, to consider the status of senior managers who are not placed in relevant posts, to consider and advise the minister on the status of former non-statutory members, to evaluate the challenges facing the Crime Intelligence Division, to review the case involving the, rendition, the renditions, the rendition of the Zimbabwean nationals by the DPCI officers, to evaluate allegations pertaining to human resources, disciplinary and performance management for all officers and officials concerned. So on matters that were considered by uh, the, the, the reference group were individual complaints, the Crime Intelligence Division, the former non-statutory force members, the supply chain members, the renditions, uh, the recommendations of the National Directorate of Public Prosecution as well as IPID, uh, and the issue of the minister as an appeals authority. <clears throat> Now we get to the issue of the individual complaints, in other words, complaints as brought forward by individual members to the reference group. Senior managers such as Lieutenant General Libya and Lieutenant General Mufome were removed from their posts as Deputy National Commissioners without being consulted. They were <clears throat> given posts of lower ranks than the ranks that they hold or held at the time. They were declared redundant, uh, and they did not, uh, they, they, did, they were declared redundant after they did not accept demotion. And they were, because they did not accept a demotion, and the fact that they were declared redundant, they were summarily dismissed by the National Commissioner. The finding by the reference group in regard to this particular complaint is that the National Commissioner did not follow the SAPS prescripts as well as the dictates of the Labor Relations Act. And as a result of this particular main point, she caused the SAPS to suffer reputational damage and she treated members with prejudice and discrimination. The members suffered loss of income and a reduced pension. She caused the SAPS to suffer financial loss through avoidable litigation. Whilst I'm on this point, <clears throat> I, let me also, I had for an example that Lieutenant General Libya at the time when these issues arose, he lost his mother and could not bury his mother <clears throat> because of course of the financial loss and, and, and of, of income and so forth. And <clears throat> I'm advised that uh, he was only assisted by colleagues who had to do and make uh, collect, uh, donations and collections uh, for her mother to be, to be buried. Now the recommendation by the reference group is that the, <clears throat> the National Commissioner committed a misconduct in this regard. 
Lieutenant General Mkwanazi, after he had been acting national commissioner, was not given a specific work responsibility and or assignment and had no performance contract. He had no office allocated to him or people to manage and was made to stay at home for more than a year. He was later given a component called facility management, which is a responsibility of an officer less than his rank to manage. He was later made to sign a backdated performance agreement and was scored as having performed well during the period when he was not at work, when he was actually sitting at home. The finding by the reference group is that the member was treated with prejudice and malice. There was wasteful and fruitless expenditure arising out of a member sitting at home on full pay for no reason. And that, thirdly, the criminal offense of fraud was possibly committed by the construction of a backdated performance record when the member in question was not at work. The recommendation is that a criminal offense of fraud was committed by the National Commissioner and that the department has got to consider issues of misconduct in relation to the Public Finance Management Act committed the, by the National Commissioner. Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Mulife and Lieutenant General Mgwenya were demoted from being Deputy National Commissioners without any consultation. Lieutenant General Mulife stayed on as Divisional Commissioner Legal Services. Lieutenant General Mgwenya was given a post auxiliary services, which is a major which is a component normally managed by an officer with a lower rank than hers. She refused to be demoted, and the National Commissioner, in response to this, had given her notice of departmental charges. The finding. The reference group finds that the National Commissioner did not follow the SAPS uh, prescripts as well as the Labor Relations Act prescripts. And secondly, that she treated members with prejudice and discrimination, although in these two cases there was no loss of income. Uh, the recommendation <coughs> is that the reference group find, uh, uh, finds, recommends that the National Commissioner committed a misconduct in this uh, regard. Major General Ngobo and Brigadier DOA officers, the two officers that had opened up a case of defeating the ends of justice against the National Commissioner. Um, and that's a case uh, <clears throat> of the alleged uh, tipping off of a uh, Lieutenant General Lemur in a communication or a conversation telephonically, and there was an interception, and the two <clears throat> a officers are said to have opened up a case. After they had done so, it is said that uh, they were then questioned for their lack of metric certificates. Major General Ngobo was uh, charged and subsequently had to leave uh, the service, and Brigadier Dio uh, was placed on stress leave and continuously being off sick. The reference group finds that such individuals could not have had their cases administered by the National Commissioner or her subordinates as she had already been conflicted in this regard. The reference group recommends that there should have been an external a neutral persons that had to be appointed to investigate and administer such matters. Major General Zuma was also demoted to, 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 to a lower rank uh, after he was removed as provincial commissioner, Hao Deng, you remember it was one particular case uh, widely reported that at some point Major General Zuma was appointed as provincial commissioner, Hao Deng, and in a matter of hours disappointed from such a, a, an assignment. Uh, the finding by the reference group is that the Labor Relations Act in this regard was not followed, and so with the SAPS. Uh, prescripts. The recommendation is that <clears throat> the rank of a Lieutenant General has got to be reinstated on, on Major General Zuma. Uh, secondly, that the new posting have got to be renegotiated as the position 
In other words, the position as the Provincial Commissioner Gauteng has already been filled. Major General Boysen lodged a grievance that the disciplinary charges against him were trumped up and his suspension was unfair. The finding by the reference group is that Advocate Nazir Kasim found that the National Commissioner was evasive and had no facts on the matter she testified on. He also found that the supervisor to General Boysen had serious allegations to answer for, which he was uh, investigating. The reference group recommends that the Provincial Commissioner needs to answer to the allegations by the DPCI and IPID and that the suspension of General Boysen was unfair and that he must be reinstated. Now let me also clarify this point and say that <coughs> the, this does not relate to the current suspension of Major General Boysen. It relates to an ongoing matter that was handled by DPCI as well as the IPID uh, some, some time back. Major General Machache lodged a grievance that he was moved from crime intelligence under the pretext that he was being investigated. The finding by the reference group is that the initial reason given for his transfer from crime intelligence was not clearly outlined. And the recommendation is that Major General Machancho must be given a fair hearing and must be allowed sufficient time to go through a security clearance process. <coughs> Lieutenant General Mkwana has lodged a grievance against the National Commissioner for lodging false affidavits in court regarding Lieutenant General Luli's case. Contrary to the National Commissioner's affidavit, Lieutenant General Mkwana alleges that he was not consulted by the National Commissioner to submit confirmatory affidavit in the case of Lieutenant General Luli, a, a case that was brought to court by freedom under law. Lieutenant General Mkwana had informed the National Commissioner about the initiation of disciplinary steps against Lieutenant General Luli. However, to his surprise, the National Commissioner told the court that such steps were not initiated by him, in other words, not initiated by General Kwanazi, and the court found that there was a dereliction of duty by Lieutenant General Kwanazi. <clears throat> the finding, the reference group finds that the National Commissioner informed the court wrongly with regard to Lieutenant General Kwanazi, uh, with regards to actions on the Mdluli matter, as well as his availability for submitting to court the confirmatory affidavit. Secondly, that the National Commissioner could have been truthful to the court and could have taken appropriate steps. It is then recommended that the National Commissioner committed a criminal act of perjury and misconduct by bringing the SAPS into disrepute in this regard. <clears throat> Lieutenant General Luli lodged a grievance that he was suspended and disciplinary steps were to be taken and concluded speedily as prescribed. General Luli does not know why such steps uh, were not taken and he's in limbo, being at home for more than two years on full pay. He feels that he can be vindicated should the departmental case or disciplinary process start. The, the findings by the reference group is that the National Commissioner delayed the disciplinary process that was initiated by Lieutenant General Mkwanazi while acting in the position of National Commissioner. The reference group finds that the member was treated with prejudice and malice and that there, was, there is wasteful and fruitless expenditure arising out of a member sitting at home on full pay for over two years. The National Commissioner had informed Parliament that the misconduct charges were placed against or were brought against a, <clears throat> a Lieutenant General Mluli in 2014, which was not the case. The reference group recommends that the wasteful and fruitless expenditure could have been avoided by conducting a hearing as directed by the court. 
it further recommends that the National Commissioner committed a misconduct in terms of the PFMA and that the National Commissioner misled Parliament with regards to uh, reporting to Parliament that a <coughs> disciplinary charges or process had been started against Lieutenant General Mluli. Major General Hangel lodged a grievance that he was removed from crime intelligence for failing to obtain a security clearance and fraudulently obtaining a security clearance. The reference group finds that he was, he was a major, major General Angel was charged for misconduct and that his case has never uh, taken off, has never been resumed. The reference group recommends that he must be given reasons for why the security clearance was declined, and secondly, that his disciplinary matter must be concluded as soon as possible. Major General Lazarus also alleged that he was declined the security clearance and transferred out of crime intelligence. The finding by the reference group is that he was charged and dismissed from the SAPS, and the recommendation it is recommended that criminal charges against him must be finalized as soon as possible. Um, before I proceed, let me just also say that the issue of, of Lieutenant General Mluli, it's a matter that also <coughs> a Judge Murphy, Justice Murphy had had also ruled on at some point, I think it was also a case uh, that was brought by Freedom Under Law, um, <clears throat> and it was ordered that he needed to face disciplinary charges. So in that regard, um, we will have to uh, proceed as, uh, as, 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 as SAPS in processing the question of uh, the disciplinary a matters against the Lieutenant General uh, Mtluli. Brigadier Shitlabani lodged a grievance that he was appointed to act in a position and later another brigadier was appointed to act in the same position without the latter being relieved of his acting capacity. In other words, you had two acting individuals in one position. The reference group finds that the two officers acted in the same position, performing the same functions while receiving acting allowances. <clears throat> and it recommends that the, there was abuse of authority, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and that investigation has got to be conducted against Lieutenant General Sitole under whose watch this happened. Lieutenant General Motiba lodged a grievance about allegations of nepotism relating to 448 covert appointments that were made at crime intelligence. The finding by the reference group is that all appointments were done in line with the HR principles and processes. It recommends that these allegations were found to be unsubstantiated as all appointments were made in line with the relevant prescripts. Lieutenant General Mulife lodged a grievance against the National Commissioner for ignoring sound legal advice. The finding, the reference group finds that the advice was indeed not followed and legal counsel was appointed without going through proper procedures. The reference group recommends that the processes that relate to the sourcing of legal advice need to be reviewed and that <clears throat> a Lieutenant General Mulife is to be engaged to resolve uh, the impasse. We then come to the recommendations by the National Director of Public Prosecution as well as IPIT. The National Commissioner was intercepted by the crime intelligence on the telephone tipping Lieutenant General Lamour about the investigation against him. And as a result of this, a case of defeating the ends of justice was opened against him. The, national, the finding is that the National Director of Public Prosecution as well as the Director of Public Prosecution in the Western Cape 
and IPID, and two independent legal experts found that a criminal case uh, may not be winnable. In other words, charges, a, a criminal charge could not be proceeded with. However, <clears throat> a departmental case of gross misconduct was committed, and the minister, as her supervisor, was advised to take disciplinary action against her. The reference group recommends that disciplinary steps should be considered against her as recommended. On allegations against the against generals in the crime intelligence environment, they, it was reported that there are generals that were transferred from crime intelligence based on the recommendations contained in the report by Lieutenant General Mutiba. The basis for transfer, amongst others, were allegations for the failure by them to obtain security clearances or obtaining illegal clearances. The reference group finds that the minister needs to have mechanisms to facilitate such appeals. A security clearance granting and or refusal may be used by those responsible as a tool to frustrate and or to assist others who may and may not be deserving. The reference group recommends the setting up of an appeals mechanism in the minister's office to advise and assist on appeal cases relating to the finalization of applications for security clearances. There is a matter that <clears throat> we had asked for a special permission from the portfolio committee pertaining to matters relating to TMS and supply chain management, TMS being the technology management uh, services. Now, <clears throat> we, we would hope that we would be given an opportunity by the portfolio committee, as we, as we had requested before them, to, <clears throat> to come and brief them specifically on those issues, precisely because there was a separate submission that was made uh, around the TMS as well as the uh, supply chain uh, issues. Then there are matters uh, for further processing. One of them is the legal services uh, and that we need to follow up on a complaint from Divisional uh, Commissioner Legal Services, uh, which basically centers around the appointment of external legal counsel uh, without following the stipulated procedure. In the second area is the rendition of the Zimbabweans. Now, you'll remember that <clears throat> we had dealt with this matter, of course, departmentally, uh, and some of the cases are still outstanding and being processed. Uh, however, the, <clears throat> the, the question of, of, of criminality and extent thereof is a matter that uh, the National Director of Public Prosecution still has got to pronounce on. On the question of the former non-statutory forces, uh, <clears throat> this is a, a particular sector that the Deputy Minister of Police is, uh, is handling, and it specifically looking into matters of service reco recognition, pension allocation, education grants for members, and the bursary, and bursaries for children, and also consideration of ranks versus experience and training uh, that uh, this is part of the issues uh, that are in the Deputy Minister's purview. Uh, the point that we are making and we have been making is that <clears throat> you know, 21 years later into our democracy, we should uh, have closure on this issue of the non-statutory forces. We can't keep on referring uh, to people that were amalgate, amalgamated and integrated into the South African Police Service as non-statutory uh, forces. So we need the reason why we still have non-statutory forces uh, as, as a point of reference is precisely because of outstanding issues that should have, uh, should have been dealt with and that are still to be dealt with and that are issues that uh, uh, the Deputy Minister is at the center of, 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 of driving. On, on, on the way forward, uh, we're stating that uh, where circumstances of unfair labor practices have been pointed out and negotiations and or renegotiations are recommended 
the SAPS shall always, shall always and at all material times uh, follow the correct prescripts and applicable laws. Secondly, that the department should use what it has, the internal expertise that would be directed by the Minister of Police and guided by the National Commissioner <coughs> or his or her delegate person to negotiate an amicable and legal outcome with affected parties, notwithstanding whether the affected parties wish to remain or leave the service. Now, all we're saying is it also relates to the first point. All we're saying is that in, any, <clears throat> in a situation where uh, you have these allegations of labor, unfair labor practices, for an example, whether it's demotions and whatever and so on, as it had been reported before the, the, the reference group, <clears throat> we need to find a way of rectifying that, whether we, we, we reassign or we renegotiate and, and so forth, exit packages and, 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 and things of that nature. It's, it's something that it would have to be followed through as part of dealing with some of the, these particular matters. We also took through the committee, through the the portfolio committee through some of the challenges that the, the, the reference group also uh, uh, reported, uh, have in their report. The first challenge was the lack of cooperation by the Office of the National Commissioner. Uh, the second challenge was that due to the lack of cooperation, some of the documents that the, the reference group uh, needed could not easily be obtained. The third area is that the allegations against the National Commissioner and some other top generals could not be subjected to a critical principle, legal principle of Audi Altarem Patem rule due to non-cooperation. In other words, uh, hearing the other side, in other words, if you, if, if the Deputy Minister, for an example, um, said things that also implicate me in whatever, in the wrongdoing or in the grievance, for an example, they, then I'm asked to also say my say, and I refuse to say my say. So in other words, I would have declined the, <clears throat> the, the application of the Audi Alternum Patem rule. Some members, the fourth point is that some members were also informed by their supervisors not to cooperate with the ministerial reference group, and this is irrespective of the initial intention to cooperate <coughs> an appeal, sorry, an appeal that was made via email that was sent to all different levels of the SAPS. And of course, despite the fact that the entire national management of SAPS was informed of the existence and the establishment of the reference group and had pledged to cooperate. Now, the concluding part is around the processing of these issues. A, we have proposed to the portfolio committee that we we'll need to set up three particular teams that have got, that would need to drive a, a, a three distinct sort of a focal points. The one team has got to be led by the acting national commissioner to look at a redress and placing of, of a generals who are not posted and in certain cases negotiate and or renegotiate exit packages where applicable. Um, and this very same team must look, must further look at mechanisms to empower the minister as an appellate executive uh, when, when it comes to issues of uh, security clearances. That's one team. In other words, looking at generally or largely issues of uh, human resource uh, management. The second point, the second area is that the second team, either to be led by a retired judge or a senior advocate, should look at the issue of disciplinary charges and disciplinary matters that are also pointed out by the reference group, as well as those that are recommended by the National Director of Public Prosecution, in terms of how those issues have got to be looked into. The third team, it must be led by a commercial crimes investigator that has got to investigate possi possible crimes of wasteful expenditure in terms of the PFMA, wasteful cancellation of tenders, et cetera, and so forth. 
so those are the three teams that would have to focus themselves on three distinct uh, sort of uh, areas of work. And once they would, uh, would have concluded their deliberations, they would you know, certainly recommend and advise the kind of steps that the, that, that the Minister of Police, the Deputy Minister of Police, would have to institute to try and correct some of these particular issues. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have an unfair advantage. You are listening up there. Now you already have a question. Um, let's do it the usual way. We'll take the set of five, and, and the minister will answer, or any other person that he delegates. Start with you. Up. Minister Abra Barbia, SABC. Um, Today is not a very good day to be Riyapiheha. First this morning's report from the committee, and now this report. And I have to be honest and just say there's a, I have a, it just feels like she's being hung out to dry. Um, can one person really be held responsible for so many things that have gone wrong within the SAPS? And then also just a technical point, how far back do these complaints go? Can you help me with that, please? Thanks. I'm Sue Makinana from City Press. Uh, Minister, the, there is a commission of inquiry that was appointed by the president that is looking at whether the commissioner is fit to hold that office. Wouldn't it be quicker to just submit this report to that commission instead of forming another commission of inquiry to look into the same issues around the same person? Um, secondly, can you just give us the names of the people who were part of this reference group? I'm sorry, I never got the names. And, and thirdly, I see on the issue of her tipping off uh, General Lamour and the IP and all these other agencies investigated and said there was not a winnable case. Now I see that they referred it to the minister as a supervisor, supervisor to institute disciplinary processes. But now she's appointed by the president. And I think your officer said previously, you can't do anything because you're not appointing uh, institutions. So what has changed? How come are you now being the ones who are disciplining her? Thank you. Marina Lamprecht from Media 24 Newspapers. Um, Minister, in this presentation, it states one of the findings is that um, the criminal offense of fraud was committed by Ria Piega. Um, can you tell me under which law did this reference group operate? By what powers can they find somebody committed a criminal offence? Thank you. And you see, we asked my question. Good afternoon, Minister Bianca Capazorio from the Sunday Times. Um, in two instances, in the instance of fraud and the instance of perjury, she, uh, you have said that Ria Piecha has broken the law. Will there be charges brought against her? Um, I'm assuming that these recommendations or findings that she's guilty of fraud, misconduct and perjury are evidence-based. Why isn't she in custody at the moment? No, no, thank you very much. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure whether you expected the, a response on my side about being, you know, hung out to dry and so forth. So really, I think that's a matter of a, 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 an opinion by <clears throat> yourself or any other individual who may want to see it that way. Now, <clears throat> the fact of the matter, and perhaps that point also, I want to link it to the, the, the issue of currently, as we speak, the president has set up a commission of inquiry. Now, <clears throat> we need to delink the two, and I'll tell you why it has got to be so. It's because the, the setting up of the commission of inquiry, for an example, arises directly out of the uh, Fulham's uh, commission of inquiry. So it, it arises directly out of that. So at the time when <clears throat> we established the reference group, uh, there was no 
a finding or recommendation by Judge Fallam, for an example, to then say we should have, there has got to be a, a commission of inquiry. So in a sense, the two, the two issues, they are separate and they should not be fudged and somewhat uh, uh, clouded and so forth. And the fact of the matter is that you have had the processing of issues <coughs> brought before the reference group in, and they have had to pronounce themselves. And we had committed ourselves that we were going to report back on the issue uh, to, to, to Parliament. And that's what we have done um, on, 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 on this work. And I think some of you also had these questions uh, whether the, the, the work of the reference group, will it be shared with, the, with, with all of you and so on. So <clears throat> I think it's important to separate the two. Um, the, 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 the question, okay, well, at the time when we launched the, 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 the reference group, we, <clears throat> we, 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 we advised that, for an example, we had a different you know, expertise that we had to pull together towards the, the reference group. We had people who, uh, who are much more clued up in the security, with the security environment, for an example, we had people that were that are quite schooled in issues of uh, management science. Uh, we had also people uh, from the legal fraternity. In other words, all of them brought, uh, brought in there uh, and, and so on. Now, <clears throat> as to what the value is, is going to be <laughs> in terms of uh, giving you the names again this time around. I just simply do not know uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Magina. Now, the, on the question of the disciplinary processes, uh, <clears throat> and I think we, we, we also do need to understand the process flow because it's going to assist us here. The Minister of Police has not taken a decision to conduct an inquiry or inquiries. What the Minister of Police is currently doing is to share the report with you to say these are the issues uh, that have been looked into and considered, processed, and recommendations by the reference group. And it is <clears throat> also for this reason, and this takes me to the second part, and it is for this reason that uh, we're then saying <clears throat> some of these issues, actually most of all of them, they've got to be subjected to the three streams that I spoke about, you know, a team that would have to look into the issues of a redress around the human resource management issues, the team that would have to look into <clears throat> what are these disciplinary and criminal and or criminal sort of matters as they, they are being suggested by the reference group, for an example. Um, the, <clears throat> excuse me. The, I think the third leg was about, hey, why am I forgetting? I'm getting old. Um, yeah, the third leg was, 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 I think, was also about another stream that has got to look into, uh, I'll tell you now. Yeah, uh, the investigations uh, around uh, <coughs> commercial matters and so on. So. It is only out of such processes, for an example, that then it would be clearer in terms of the instruments that the minister would have to embark on and focus on in dealing with the specific allegations, for an example. So <clears throat> at this stage, that, matter, the, the, that process still has got to, to unfold. Now, when we establish the reference group, uh, we referred to, <clears throat> I think uh, it was the Public Service Act Section 3 E and J of, uh, of that act, uh, in terms of which uh, the, the reference group uh, was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was established to assist uh, the minister in processing and, of course, uh, necessary advice on, uh, on these particular matters. I think as I had said earlier on that you had a number of issues 
that were also in the public domain. <clears throat> uh, and there was largely an expectation for the minister to either pronounce on those issues or for the minister to provide leadership and guidance on those particular issues. And of course, being new in the portfolio, uh, you certainly needed an objective angle somewhere else that had needed to ab absorb and process most of these particular issues and so on. And that's how the concept of the reference group uh, actually uh, came about. And of course, enabled by this particular section that I had, uh, I had, uh, I had referred to. Um, I think somebody asked something about charges at the end. What was it about charges? Was it you? No, but no, but but you see, that's 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 uh, again. Let's, let's you, even if it's not in relation to the national commission, let's correct the the, the, the understanding around process. The fact that you may be facing allegations does not mean that you are guilty. Um, allegations remain allegations until such time as they get tested through evidence and through a particular process, of course. Um, and then subsequently, uh, through that process, uh, you, a determination would then be made whether you need to go somewhere else or remain where you are. <laughs> you know. uh, so in a sense, um, <clears throat> uh, that's that's uh, that's 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 what the case is here. Generally speaking, about the question of uh, so these are matters that have been uh, reported, processed. Yes, uh, they remain allegations up until such time. Oh. Uh, they remain allegations up until such time that they get tested through a process, and of course. Uh, the other related matters, and then, uh, of course, a decision necessarily will be taken in terms of what essentially would have to happen in that regard. Is this yours? And what I don't think is this. It's so red. Um, Pretoria. Thank you, Chairperson. We don't have questions in Pretoria. Well, those were the live proceedings from Parliament where Minister of Police, Natin Tlaib. Another set of questions? Uh, Andy? M. Kwanazi? Uh, Minister, may I ask, since you are here, the leadership of the police is here today, not about this report, but about the, po the way the police have handled protest. It's ongoing. As we speak, there are reports that police are shooting, stun grenades, and all these things at students at UWC. We saw similar scenes here in Parliament earlier today. Is this the way to deal with it, as far as you're concerned? Um, oh, sorry. Just quickly, Minister, we haven't indicated the time frame for the, for the work of these three, three streams that you talked about. Have you given them? the amount of time that they left to work on and then take a decision based on that. Hey, sorry, let me, let me start uh, with this, uh, with, with, with the question, uh, Mr. Mkwanas. The, um, firstly, we still have got to constitute the teams in question, okay, uh, as part of, <clears throat> as part of uh, processing and so forth. We will also be largely governed and informed by, <clears throat> by uh, I think, the amount and the scope of work that would have to be conducted and so on. So we, we still have got to zoom into, 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 into that area. But of course, uh, the driving principle here is that these matters have been hanging up and about for quite some time. And we do need to have closure. Uh, on these particular issues. And we do need to have closure precisely because we are also a, driven by a, the, 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 the notion and concept that we, we have got to overcome most of these particular problems with a view also a, to redress, but also institutionally, a, in a sense. 
uh, <clears throat> rectify that which, uh, of course, needed, needs to be rectified, and so on for purposes of ensuring that we cultivate and instill, you know, the constructive moral out of uh, the ordinary membership of the South African Police Service. So that's, that's the one thing. Uh, <clears throat> on the question of, of protest, uh, the South African Police Service has a responsibility to enforce the law. And that enforcement occupies the divide between uh, order and disorder. So the divide in there is the question of uh, enforcing the law. And, that, and that's very important. And we can't be expected to understand that the South African Police Service shouldn't enforce the law. It would have to. <clears throat> if you ask the question whether is this the way to, to deal with a question of protest, I think my view would be to say it's not a question that needs to be posed to the police because that question is the question that says as, 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 a, as a country and as well as the designated levels of leadership, for instance, sectorally and otherwise, are we doing our level best, for instance, to resolve our problems, even before the police come onto the scene? The tendency, <coughs> excuse me, the tendency is that a, there is failure at different uh, sort of levels, for instance, to handle and process issues in such a manner that there's, that there's an amicable resolution of issues. Even in the manner in which we have got to conduct ourselves, whether we're demonstrating or whether we're striking and whatever and so forth, taking responsibility for that. There is failure to do that, largely. And then the issue gravitates and becomes a security matter and it becomes a police matter and so forth. But the origins of the issue is that it's not a police matter. So <clears throat> a, my argument with you will be around that particular angle in particular. And then say, look, there's something that needs to be done at that particular level before the issue becomes policing. But we're also on record having taken pride in the manner in which, uh, under the circumstances, our police have conducted themselves in all these, uh, you know, related incidences and so forth. We've so acted with restraint. We have, <clears throat> in the process, you might remind you, these protests have been national in character and so forth. You have no loss of life, you have no casualties and so forth, precisely because we had, had to deal with a very difficult situation uh, to our utmost best and so forth. And I think it will be correct to recognize that particular honest effort on the side of uh, policemen and women to ensuring that there are no, there shouldn't be loss of life around the, some of these protests, and these protests, some of them, uh, have been, you know, by character, somewhat violent and so forth. But, you know, uh, our police have been, have been. So I've had, uh, and our police have been uh, up to to the task to deal with this. Now, I've had this thing about stun grenades. Now, a stun grenade has got absolutely no shrapnel, for an example. So it's non lethal. It's called stun because it stuns you. Wow. You know, that's what it does. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, it just, you know, the emission of an intimidating sound, yes, I agree, but it's more to do with, you know, controlling and, and, and crowd control and, and, and so it goes and so forth. So the stun, the application of a stun grenade should not be equated to an application of an F4 grenade, for an example, uh, which is quite lethal. Uh, so I think we should make a distinction between the two. <clears throat> but it, there shouldn't be an expectation that if a situation in a crowd management uh, kind of environment or protest of any situation gets out of hand, that the police should just simply not make an attempt to, uh, to, to enforce the law and so on. Uh, so, uh, you know, our police members have been using shields, for an example, instead of guns, 
Okay, I'm just, you know, precisely because the effort, the concentrated point is to then say, <coughs> yes, these, these matters become policing matters when surely they shouldn't be at this stage where they are because they can be resolved differently somewhere else. Uh, but we have got to do our level best in ensuring that uh, in the process there should absolutely be no loss of lives. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honourable House Chair, she didn't ask for that interview. Ah. On behalf oh, of the National Oh, the Freedom. Honourable Member, I'm very sorry. Apologies. Is there any objection to the motion as raised by the, and, uh, the Honourable ANC Member? No objection agreed to. Julie, the time is yours. Thank you, ma'am. On behalf of the National Freedom Party, I move without notice that this Honourable House notes that a member of this honorable house suddenly fell ill during a recent conference which was held in KwaZulu-Natal and also